Alrighty, guys, um, we are going to go over our stuff for um, this week. We only have a few things that we need to really talk about for this week, so hopefully we'll keep it pretty short. Um, let's see here. I need to share my screen. There we go. Okay, so um, let's get out of here real quick. Um, just to kind of, if you have already seen this, um, it's probably already been corrected, but um, I went ahead and changed the, um, hey, Laura, I'm just getting started here with a meeting. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and changed um, to make the uh, two assignments from like really early this morning visible. They were just not visible for a little bit this morning, um, but they are visible now. So if you ran into that, um, the two assignments for this week should be open for you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll go to our module. Um, we are still in module two this week. Um, this is like a double week for this module. So um, we're still in it, still working on assignments for it. So let's go ahead and click in here. And um, you'll see that the quiz is now available for you. So make sure that you've watched um, all of the Ed Puzzles for this week. And um, that's lessons three, four, and five and uh, then you should be ready to take the test. And just a, um, another just sort of like disclosure with it. And I try to give like, you know, three, four, five warnings about this just because it always ends up being an issue for someone. Um, but just wanted to kind of clarify with the quizzes, um, you only get one attempt per quiz. So once you start that quiz, um, that is your only attempt to complete it. If you run out of time or if you click away from the page or run out of time or, um, you know, are working on other stuff and like don't realize that it's open, um, it won't let you take it again. And if it's one of the issues that I've listed like out in the syllabus, it's like a technical issue, um, such as, you know, running out of time or something like that, um, I won't be able to reopen the quiz for you. So again, there's only one attempt per quiz. Um, once you begin the quiz, you'll have 20 minutes to complete the quiz. Um, all quizzes are like five to 10 questions. So it really, and they're all multiple choice or like true or false. So, um, you know, unless you haven't read the content, you should be able to answer the quiz questions in like five minutes or less. Uh, but I gave you 20 just in case there is an issue or if you want to look back in your notes or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, after the 20 minutes have passed, whatever answers you've selected will save and the rest will like just default to you didn't answer them or like it was a zero. Um, so please make sure that you, when you click on that and you open the quiz that you're ready to start the quiz. Um, when, once you do start the quiz, um, I'm not saying that like you can't use your prior notes for the class, but if you do like click away from the page um, or if you like exit out of your, your browser or something like that, um, it won't let you restart the quiz. So um, just be really careful with that. Um, don't, don't click around too much. Don't accidentally exit out of the quiz. Um, it won't let you restart it if you do that. And then um, after you complete the quiz, it doesn't always allow you to view the answers, but like immediately after, if you want to see which ones you missed, you can click the OK button on the bottom left corner of the screen and it'll let you review your answers. Um, if you do, I will, I should have mentioned this like earlier on, but if you do want to like look back at your quiz questions at some points, um, or if we do have like with our final exam, I'll use some quiz questions from previous quizzes. So um, maybe take like a screenshot of the page just so that you have the answers for later on. Uh, but I don't think that it lets you review the quiz questions um, like after the initial, like you, as soon as you've completed the quiz, it'll not let you go back into the, the questions. Um, so again, just be really aware of that. Um, th with this week, I don't think I have any of like the fill in the blank ones. So um, I did have a couple questions about that last week for quiz one. Um, one of the questions, which was like, what do you need to create artwork? Um, and the answer was medium. Um, if there are questions like that where you have to like manually type in the answer. Um, it won't give you the correct answer until I've manually graded it. So it's not like an automatic thing like the rest of them that can just like, you know, the the algorithm or whatever can just like answer it or tell you if you've answered it right or wrong. Um, so if you do run into one of those, just note that you won't get the answer for that immediately. Um, but it will, I, I will give you feedback and tell you if the, the answer was right or wrong. You just have to like go click back into the quiz once I've graded it to make sure. Um, and then, so we did the line drawing assignment last week, which I was happy with most of those. I'm, I'm still kind of getting through grading them. 
Um, and then for this week, we have another discussion style assignment. So um, remember the discussions, it does require you to respond to classmates. Um, so I did have a few people in this last activity on the lesson three assignment or discussion that they did the assignment correctly, but they either didn't respond to classmates or they didn't post their reflection about the, like, you know, the experience of doing it. They only posted the drawing. So um, that's, that's worth a lot of points. Um, the way that the rubric is divided is that it's like, did you do the actual activity? Did you give your reflection? And did you respond to classmates? So if you didn't do the, the reflection and you didn't do the responding to classmates and you only did the like creating the assignment, you'll still get probably like a 40 on the, the assignment because you didn't complete like two thirds of the, the required tasks for it. Um, alrighty, so let's go over the, the color discussion and kind of what that's gonna look like this week. Um, I really like both of the, well, I mean, the one is just sort of basic, but um, there is a kind of fun activity that you get to do with this one that um, I'm, I got really like addicted to um, a few years back when I first like started assigning it for this um, this game but, but, or this um, discussion, but we'll get into that in just a second. So lesson five was about color and value, um, which you'll both need to know for this assignment for, for sure. So um, for this, the objective is to demonstrate a basic understanding of the color wheel and color relationships. So we've got two separate activities that we're doing for this. The first one is pretty basic. You're gonna use markers, crayons, colored pencils, or anything else that has like the primary second and secondary colors with it. Um, doesn't really matter if you wanna do paint or markers or you know whatever it, whatever it might be, pastels, whatever you have on hand. Um, and to create an accurate color wheel. So if you remember in lesson five, we talked about there's one way to set up a color wheel. I mean, like the colors can kind of look a little bit different, but as far as like what color is beside of what color, um, there's like one particular way that you have to do that. And if you don't do it that way, then it's not gonna make sense. And like the color relationships are just gonna be really off. So um, maybe go back to that Ed puzzle or just look up like, you know, the proper way to set up a color wheel if you don't wanna look back on the Ed puzzle and make sure that you're doing it in the correct way. Um, so you can either uh, like screenshot this, this example that I have here, or if you don't have a printer at home, which I'm not expecting that everybody has access to a printer, um, you can just draw this, like just get a piece of paper and just draw your color wheel. Um, or, you know, you can look up another one if you'd like to and just like a little printable copy, whatever you'd like to do. Um, but just make sure that there are, I think there's 12. I just want to make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yep. Just make sure there is 12 little like sections for each of the colors that you're going to need to use. Um, and remember the color wheel, like an accurate color wheel is going to have primary, secondary, and tertiary colors in it. Um, if you leave one of those out, it's not going to be complete. So um, this is how it should look without the colors in place. Um, and then you'll have to just come back and, you know, make sure that you're putting the color down in the correct locations. And then task two, um, there is an app called Blendoku, and I'm I'm assuming most everybody has some sort of smartphone. Um, if you do not, if you still are, you know, really old school and have a flip phone and don't can't download apps or anything, um, let me know and we'll work something out. There is also a like computer version of this um, that you can do as well. It's not quite as like user friendly, but you can still do it for like the just sake of doing the assignment. Um, this app is called Blendoku, and there's a Blendoku and there's a Blendoku 2. And since this assignment, I should I should just link that one instead. Um, you can do Blendoku just like the original one if you'd like to, but I really think that Blendoku 2 is much more user friendly. It moves a lot quicker um, and it's just kind of more accessible. So um, I would I would personally, if you're downloading this on your iPhone or on your um, Android or like whatever it is, then I would download Blendoku 2. And that's, it's just the, the um, like number two. Um, and then what I would like you to do is spend about 30 to 45 minutes on the Blendoku app. It is free. There is no like, it's great because there's like no ads or anything like that. It's, it's just totally a free app. Um, and then once you've spent like 30 to 45 minutes on it, you can um, screenshot your highest level and upload to a thread. So, um, or uh, upload to your thread. So for this, um, you're actually gonna embed two images for this assignment. You'll have your color wheel and you'll have your Blendoku like screenshotted level. Um, and I mean, if you have an iPhone, like 
mine just to remember screen. I mean, you guys are probably, you know, more aware of how to use your iPhone and how to use your phone and technology than I am. But um, if you're not, then to take a screenshot, just um, let me find the Blendoku app and I'll, I'll just kind of hold it up to the camera and I'll show you what I mean. I'll, I'll attach some screenshots as well of this to help you out. So I've been playing this for, for a while. I don't expect you guys uh, to be at this point, but for example, like I'm on hard, hard one, and you can just take a screenshot of that and it'll show you like the levels that you're on. Um, and I'll know that you're on the hard um, on level 15. And that's all that you really need to do for that. Um, and remember, task three is a reflection. So you do need to write about your color exploration. What did you learn from this experience? Be sure to li list at least um, two lesson five color vocabulary terms. And your writing must be three to five sentences long. Um, I do read these and I do know if you're just kind of like, you know, doing going through the motions, like not um, giving it your full effort. So three to five hearty sentences for like what you learned with this experience um, and, you know, how you uh, applied your knowledge from lesson five to this experience. And then you only need to respond to one classmate in a meaningful way and use at least two five uh, lesson five vocabulary terms as well in this response. And then the last thing that I'd like to go over, and I did talk about this a little bit last week, but I'm going to go into more detail this week just because we, um, we we are like at the point where we have to actually complete it. So we're doing the project one outline this week as well. Um, this is just like a it, project one is a paper. And so hopefully if you've had like an English class or something that you've probably done an outline of some sort before, before you start a research paper, before you start like a big essay. Um, so this is this is kind of the same thing here. So for project one, our um, it's kind of an a, ex, like a um, a longer version of like our uh, our active seeing assignment in a lot of ways. Um, it's a little bit more extensive, and we know a little bit more now about like the vocabulary and art terminology and whatnot. So um, yeah, let's let's kind of just dig right into this. So you're going to need to choose an artwork for project one art analysis. The goal is to establish a basic outline that you will further develop when writing your paper. You must stick with this artwork for the full assignment. So make sure that this is an artwork that you are interested in or you want to do more research on um, and you're not going to get bored with, you know, after just a few moments. Um, so please provide the following information below and be as detailed as possible when answering the five questions. So um, you can kind of list these. I don't mind if you kind of like lay it out like that and not in the essay format because um, you are just doing the outline for your paper here. However, I do want you to speak in like full sentences and make sure that you are, you know, being thorough with the information that you're giving and it's more than just a couple words. Um, so the assignment, you're going to answer the prompts listed below and establish your outline for the intended art analysis paper. Um, you'll need to identify your chosen artwork to analyze and list the title, medium, date, dimensions, and the museum it's located, located in. And um, I absolutely want you to include a high quality image of this artwork as well. Do not like submit this paper without putting an image of your artwork in. Um, so that's, that's all you need to know there. Um, like I said before, Google Art and Culture is like the best resource for stuff like this because you can just look at a lot of like really um, well-known artwork, like, you know, very famous artwork, and it'll give you all those details there. Um, second, you're going to list what three formal elements are like elements of design, which we went over in three through five lessons. Um, what three formal elements in this composition or in this composition, how do you intend to discuss them? Please refer to lessons three through six or three through five for the formal elements and briefly describe how each of these elements are used and point to the specific parts in the artwork. So um, this is like like I've said before, um, all of the elements are present in artwork. I mean, they're they're usually all there for the most part. Um, but for this, you just need to identify three of them. So identify what color is being used. If you identify what color is being used, talk about the color scheme that's being used. If it is it monochromatic, is it analogous, is it complementary? 
Um, is it a cool color scheme? So like, you know, is it more like on the blues and green side? Is it a warm color scheme? So it's more on the reds and oranges side. Um, that's where, that's what you would need to discuss there. Um, and then point to specific places. So I'm going to use Starry Night because I have a reminder here that you cannot choose Starry Night for this assignment. Um, I might talk about how the color usage there is mostly cool colors. It's, you know, a night sky. It's not really like, you know, in the middle of the day. It's not very bright. It's more kind of subdued, like blues and, um, you know, kind of like just grays and whatnot in the sky. And then there is some contrast or like some complementary color used from the stars and from the moon um, that really like pop the two kind of areas apart from one another. Um, and, you know, so just do that, that same kind of thing, talk about it in that way, um, but use three uh, elements. So you can use color, space, line, um, you know, in, any of those, it doesn't matter what combination, but you'll, you'll kind of notice that like some artwork uses more of the elements than others. So, um, you know, just pick what makes sense. Um, don't, if there, if there's not a lot of line usage, um, in your artwork, maybe don't choose line for your formal element for this. And then three, um, this, I, I really, we, we've, we're going to go over lesson six and seven this week. So I would probably listen to those videos and watch those Ed Puzzle videos before you begin your project one outline. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about uh, which two organize, organizing principles of design do you intend to discuss and how are these two principles of design used? Um, please refer to lesson seven for the principles of design. So um, actually, as I was reading that out loud, I remember we are not going over those this week, but um, you can look those up if you'd like to just look up principles of design, or if you want to go ahead and watch the Ed Puzzles for next week, you can do that as well. Um, totally up to you, but um, just kind of, I don't really care what those are that you choose. If you want to select those now, um, you can, or if you just want to kind of like, you know, do a little bit of outside research and decide which ones, you know, might be useful. You can change, although you can't change the artwork, you can change the principles that you talk about. So, you know, after next week, if it feels more like, you know, you want to use, you know, uh, symmetry and balance opposed to um, emphasis and variety, then you can, you can do that if you'd like to. Four, um, briefly state how does the work relate to its culture's history, values, politics, economy, or beliefs and practices. Choose one. Um, or you can choose a couple if you'd like to. So basically, this is, um, I'm not asking for your opinion on this. I'm asking for you to do some outside research on the piece and talk about how it is relative to, like, you know, the artist or the artist culture or a history or, you know, something like that. This is, again, Nothing in this outline is opinion based. This is all stuff that you, except for, you know, you can talk about how you feel like the um, principles of design and the elements of art are used. But as far as like the research that you're doing for this and like the assumptions on like the meaning and the content, um, you, you are not assuming anything. You are not giving your opinion. Um, you are doing your own research for this. So and if you do have opinions about the work, then, and you want to like back them up, then do the research, you know, find scholarly sources and say like, you know, I feel like the piece, it creates a very somber mood and I can imply this through, you know, the artist discussion of the work and, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so again, think about how the work of art is represent representative of what is going on in the culture it was created in. And then lastly, what is the subject matter being presented in the artwork briefly state? Um, again, I've, I've left a lot of feedback on this on the act of seeing assignment. Um, but please remember, subject matter is, is not in any way, like it does not require any, um, like it, it's very robotic. <laughs> it's like, you know, if I'm looking at Starry Night and I'm, I'm asked to describe the subject matter, I would say, this is a night sky with stars and a moon in the sky. This is a little village down below. Um, and there's some trees and, you know, some other kind of greenery happening around there. Um, that's, that's all you need to say. That's, it's just like, you know, you're at a museum and I'm on the phone with you and you're looking at an artwork and you're describing to me over the phone what the artwork look like looks like. So I, I assume that I can't see the artwork. So don't assume there's no picture, there is no anything, but you're telling me what this artwork looks like. This is not you saying um, like, you know, 
this piece, like it, you can tell that the artist was really like having a difficult time here because um, it, it just feels like there's like a lot of depression and that's all things that you're implying and you're assuming on the, on the painting or on the artwork. So this is not things that are physically there. Um, so, you know, for the future, <laughs> subject matter is not anything that you're implying or opinionated on. It's just, it is what is there. Um, it exists, you know, a robot can, or, or a machine could tell you what that is. It doesn't require any like creative thought. Um, but you need subject matter. You need to describe that in order for, you know, everyone to get on the same like playing field, everybody to understand, you know, what it is that it is we're looking at. Um, and then lastly, just as a reminder, no starry night for this assignment. Um, I want you to think a little bit more outside the box than that. And um, there will be points deducted if you do choose that one, because I usually always have somebody choose starry night, um, even though I put the reminder in there. So that is all that we, is going on for this week. You don't have any ed puzzles for this week. So um, you do have, you know, several assignments going on, um, but there is no ed puzzles. So you don't have to spend time watching that. Um, but yep, you've got your quiz two, your lesson five color discussion, and your project one outline. Um, and then if you need to look back on your PowerPoints or in the lessons, those are the links right there um, and they will be available to you. But other than that, that is all that I have for you guys this week. Um, if there's any questions or anything, you know, please let me know and I will try to answer those for you. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys' work for this week. Laura, did you have any questions or anything or were you good to go? Let me try to get on my screen share. Okay. All righty then. We will see you guys soon.